see in the last lecture we were uh, trying to prove this result that the row rank is equal to the column rank okay the proof was left incomplete so first uh, task uh, for today is to complete that and then uh, I will discuss a notion of the matrix of a linear transformation over finite dimensional spaces and then look at some of uh, how to compute the matrix for instance one or two examples of linear transformations where uh, I will tell you how to construct the matrix of the linear transformation and then discuss probably some of the elementary preliminary properties and then continue this discussion further okay so let me uh, recall that we are uh, uh, our first task is to prove that the row rank is equal to the column rank I will quickly go through what we had done earlier. A is an M cross N real matrix and the row rank of A is equal to the column rank of A where what is the row rank so all these uh, will be recalled uh, quickly row rank is equal to the dimension of uh, the row space of A. dimension of the row space of A and uh, if uh, R is the row reduced echelon matrix row equivalent to A then this is equal to the number of non zero rows of R we use the notation uh, small r for that okay let me recall again this capital R is a row reduced echelon matrix row equivalent to A then uh, we had seen that the row rank of A is equal to the number of non-zero rows of the row reduced echelon form of A. What is the column rank of A? Column rank of A is equal to the dimension of, of the column space of A. dimension of the column space of A where uh, what is a column space it is the subspace spanned by the columns of A and we had seen earlier that uh, anything any vector in the column space of A can be written as a linear combination of the columns of A by definition and so if Y is in the column space of A then Y is equal to AX for some X okay. So let me write this is the dimension of the subspace y such that y you could set up or collect all y such that y is equal to ax for some x in Ra. this is the subspace this is the column space of the matrix A. So it is a dimension of this space that uh, is called the uh, column rank the number of non-zero rows of the row reduced echelon form of the matrix A we have seen that is a row rank of A we want to show these two are equal and uh, where we started the proof was to look at uh, the system so I am getting into the proof and the first few steps we have discussed uh, earlier I am recalling uh, these uh, steps uh, S is the solution set of the system AX equal to 0 we are using this notation S is a solution, sort of solution set of the system AX equal to 0 this is a subset of Rn this is a subspace of Rn and uh, what we know is that this is the set of all X and Rn such that from uh, what we have uh, discussed when we uh, looked at uh, the row reduced echelon form we know that these two sets are the same the solution set does not change. Now we are again looking at Rx equal to 0 there was one uh, interpretation that we had seen earlier uh, R is the number of non-zero rows I will keep that we have the unknowns x1 x2 etc xn these are split into two types one type corresponding to the leading non-zero entries of uh, the non-zero rows of R so I have the variables xc1 xc2 etc xcr 
okay these are the variables corresponding to the leading non zero entries of the first r non zero rows of capital r that is i equals 1 2 3 etc r that is the n variables are split into two categories one corresponding to the leading non zero entries the other ones are the rest of the variables we are calling them u1 u2 etc u n minus r the number of variables is n r have been eliminated here the rest of them are n minus r then we had uh, seen earlier that the system rx equal to 0 when uh, expanded using this uh, a new notation we will have equations like this x c 1 plus summation j equals 1 to n minus r some constants let us say alpha 1 j uh, I am using uh, u u j this is equal to 0 etc x c r summation j equal to 1 to n minus r alpha r j u j equal to 0 these are the r uh, equations these are the r non trivial equations of the system rx equal to 0 the rest of the equations give no information 0 on the left 0 on the right i will now adopt a slightly different notation this is just to recall what we have done earlier the real labeling of these uh, variables in this manner i'll now get back to the original x with the following notation so let me introduce this set j I will introduce the set J. This is 1, 2, 3, etc. N, where I have deleted uh, C1, C2, etc. Cr. I delete these numbers C1, C2, etc. Cr from this N. Then uh, the cardinality of J, number of elements in J is N minus R. Number of elements in J equals n minus r these uh, equations I will rewrite x c 1 plus summation j element of j alpha 1 j I go back to the variable x j uh, sorry this is um, yeah this is fine right uh, x c 1 is a number so I must use the subscript here so not the superscript there so let me go back uh, and uh, correct this this is uh, alpha 1 j uh, u j subscripts see these are numbers each on the right I have 0 this is a number this is also a number and this is a number that comes from this u 1 u 2 etc u n minus r so this is u j similarly these equations will be alpha 1 j x j equals 0 etc x c r plus summation j element of j alpha r j x j equal to 0 all that I have done is to relabel the variables u 1 u 2 etc u n minus r as x j for j element of j u 1 u 2 etc u n minus r are now x j for j element of j is that okay if it is in j then uh, it does not correspond to c1 c2 etc cr those are written separately okay what is the advantage of this okay again get back to what we have uh, studied earlier how do you get the set of all solutions of this uh, system look at the so called free variables that is look at the variables uh, that correspond to uh, look at the unknowns that correspond to those entries in j look at the entries look at the uh, free variables u1 u2 etc un minus r earlier look at the uh, variables uh, xj for j in j you assign arbitrary values to them come back and substitute determine xc1 etc xcr that will give you one set of values take another set of values for xj j in j another set of values you compute all the solutions using this okay among these solutions let us give uh, a new notation for the following variables how do I I am introducing sj for j in j 
I am introducing the vector, this is a vector, I will use subscripts for uh, real number scalars and uh, superscripts for vectors, S j, j and j, each S j, let me emphasize belongs to R n to avoid ambiguity, each S j belongs to R n, how many S j's are there? There are n minus R S j's, what is the definition of S j? S j is that vector which has the value, let me write, S j is that vector whose jth coordinate is 1, that is I am looking at one specific assignment for the free variables. I will take a j in j and then look at the following specific assignment of the free variables. I will take uh, j in j and then put x j equals 1, that is the coordinate corresponding to the first j that I have chosen from capital J, that is equal to 1 x i equals 0 for all i element of j, i not equal to j. I am only looking at the free variables now. I am only looking at the free variables. There are n minus r free variables, u1, u2, etc., u n minus r. Earlier, x j, j in j now. These are the n minus r variables. I will look at a very specific assignment now of values for these free variables, pick a j in j, let us say 1 belongs to j, then I will write down a vector, I will call that S1, first coordinate is 1, there are some other elements in j, assign 0 for all those values, substitute in this equation, you will determine x e 1 etc., etc., x e r, give those values, fill up that vector, that is my S1. Is that clear? Okay. For any particular j and j, assign the value xj equal to 1, that is a free variable. j capital J corresponds to free variables, correspond capital J corresponds to indices which are the free variables. So I assign the value xj equal to 1, all the other coordinates corresponding to j again, only those are free, the rest of them, these are not free these you have to go back to these equations, substitute and then determine this. What I am doing is fixing one of these equations, fix that variable x j equal to 1, assign the others to be 0 and then determine x e 1 etc, x e r, I know some values 1 minus 1 e pi etc, come back, fill it up, I have s j. I do this for each j in j, there are n minus r s j's. we obtain n minus r such s j's. Okay. Each of the s j is a solution of r x equal to 0, each of the s j is a solution of r x equal to 0, so each s j belongs to s. each s j is a solution, so each s j belongs to s. Can you see that these vectors are linearly independent immediately? What is the reason? The reason is very similar to the standard basis vector, vectors being linearly independent. This entry is 1, how do I, this entry is 1 for s j, let us say I look at s j plus 1 that entry will have s j plus the j plus 1th entry 1, all other free variables will have the value 0, forget about the vari values that these variables take, there is a 0, it is like a column, it is like a column, there is a 1 and 1 entry, all other entries are 0, these vectors have to be independent, okay. So for one thing, these s j's are linearly independent, the argument as I said is very similar to the argument that the standard basis is a basis, the standard basis vectors are linearly independent. So SJs are linearly independent, okay, let me tell you what uh, I am trying to prove, I am trying to prove 
that the solution set the solution space the solution subspace is of dimension n minus r I want to show that the solution space is of dimension n minus r I want to show that it has a basis consisting of n minus r elements I am explicitly determining such a basis the first step is to prove that these vectors are independent second set is uh, second step is to prove that they are uh, they, they form a spanning set that I will do next if I had done this then it follows that the subspace uh, s the subspace s is of dimension n minus r use rank nullity dimension theorem we will get uh, row rank equals column rank okay so <coughs> the next step is to show that these vectors span any solution that is if I take uh, some x star as a solution some x star that satisfies a x star equal to 0 I must show that this x star is a linear combination of these n minus r vectors okay okay I am giving the argument you can fill up the details how do we get a solution of a x equal to 0 there is only one procedure that we know what is our procedure there are free variables give some values to the free variables come back and determine these variables that is a solution this is the general method okay I have n minus r free variables take one of them I give arbitrary values to the n minus r variables let us let us say I take the jth coordinate I, I look at the entry corresponding to xj I look at the entry corresponding to xj that entry is alpha let us say then I can write that as alpha times 1 then look at the next entry corresponding to j in j some uh, some xj plus 1 xj plus 2 some entry that is some beta that is beta times 1 I keep doing this for each j in j I look at xj that entry and then I write that as if it is 0 I leave it as it is if it is not 0 it is some uh, constant alpha then I write it as alpha times 1 leave it and do this for all xj for j in j I will have uh, I will have n minus r vectors can you see then that the x star that I started with is a linear combination of these that is immediate almost it is again very similar to the standard basis in a standard basis there is only one entry one all other entries are 0 this is more or less like the standard basis because of the reason that these values x e 1 etc x e r are not in your control they can take uh, other values non zero values they are not in your control but look at the rest of them the rest of them are free and we are uh, we have looked at a very particular choice in constructing xj this 100 zero zero type and so please fill up the details what follows is that each solution so let me write let uh, y belong to s then it can be seen that y is a linear combination of these sj's for j in j an argu argument almost uh, duplicating the or imitating the argument for the standard basis can be applied here to show that these vectors are not only independent they span the solution set s so what is the meaning then so dimension of the subspace s is n minus r okay I have given an explicit basis for this subspace let us uh, go back and uh, let me use this okay so let us go back and see what uh, s is s is set of all I will now use this set of all uh, x such that ax equal to 0 okay the dimension of this subspace is n minus r now let me define a linear transformation t from r n to r m by t of x equals a x matrix multiplication x n r n what is a the matrix that I started with a is the matrix that I started with I am defining a linear transformation this is only to this is a via media to apply rank nullity dimension theorem rank nullity dimension theorem is applicable for a linear transformation I am going to practically apply it to a matrix to apply it to a matrix I want this step t x equal to x then we know that this t is linear okay rank nullity dimension theorem can be applied to the linear map t 
by rank nullity dimension theorem rank of t plus nullity of t equals dimension of the codomain uh, I am sorry domain that is n rank plus nullity is a dimension of the domain codomain could be even infinite dimensional okay rank of t this time in terms of the languages in terms of uh, linear transformations earlier it is row space column space rank t what is rank t rank of t is the dimension of the range space okay so rank of t is a dimension of a range space range space of t that is dimension of range space of t let us write uh, the complete definition it is a set of all y in R m such that uh, y can be written as uh, a into x for some x in R n I am sorry y equals t x I am writing down the uh, range of t okay but t x is a x so this is the dimension of the subspace y such that uh, y equals a x but uh, we have encountered the subspace before we have encountered the subspace before column space dimension of the column space column rank column rank of a so rank of t is a column rank of a what is nullity of t dimension of the null space of a dimension of n of t that is what dimension of the subspace of all x such that t x equal to 0 that is a dimension of all x that satisfy a x equal to 0 because t x equal to a x this is what we have determined as n minus r dimension s is n minus r s is the set of all x as at a x equal to 0 so this number is n minus r nullity of t is n minus r so go back to this equation n is equal to rank of t that is column rank of a plus rank of t plus nullity of t column rank of a plus n minus r cancel n column rank of a equals r what is r now number of non zero rows of capital r that is the row rank of r that is the row rank of a okay, that's a row rank of a now this is uh, a proof that involves uh, lots of calculations primarily using uh, rank nullity dimension theorem but there is a more uh, sophisticated way of proving this using transposes we will look at this proof uh, quite later okay but this is in uh, using all the calculations that you do uh, for uh, a row reduced echelon matrix homogeneous equations non homogeneous equations etc okay so this is one of the most important results in linear algebra that's why i have made it a point to uh, prove this uh, completely okay so let's move on to the next topic the matrix of a linear transformation okay so i want to discuss the notion of uh, the matrix of a linear transformation this is another uh, fundamental notion uh, i hope you remember the statement that i made some time ago when we discussed uh, examples of linear transformations i'll that is something we have done even now <coughs> given a matrix so recall uh, this given a matrix uh, a in uh, a with real entries m cross n um, the mapping t from r n to r m defined by t of x equals a x this is linear given a matrix there is a natural linear transformation that can be associated with this matrix and I also made the statement there is a certain converse which is true 
Now what is the converse? We will I will make this uh, statement of the converse precise and uh, also show how to construct uh, how to prove this statement in a constructive manner. The converse statement is that given a linear transformation there is a matrix associated with this linear transformation which behaves in precisely this manner given a linear transformation between finite dimensional spaces there is precisely one matrix corresponding to a corresponding to basis two bases such that the matrix will do what uh, you have here so this is more or like uh, the defining uh, equation of a linear transformation between finite dimensional spaces okay so that is a statement uh, that we are going to prove so how do you go about it I have uh, still not made the statement precise so I will simply say a certain converse is true okay so let us uh, go back uh, and look at finite dimensional vector spaces so I have uh, let uh, V W I have two uh, finite dimensional vector spaces over the same field let us say the field of real numbers let us say dimension of V is uh, N and uh, dimension of uh, W is N. Let me also write down uh, two bases explicitly let me use the following notation script B V will be a basis for V B V let us say the entries are U1 U2 etc UN this is uh, a basis of V B W will be a basis for uh, W uh, let me call it uh, V1 V2 etc V M a basis of W so I start with two given bases then uh, given uh, any vector X and V it can be written as a linear combination of these vectors let us say alpha 1 uh, u 1 plus alpha 2 u 2 etc plus alpha n u n <coughs> alpha 1 alpha 2 etc alpha n are real numbers they are unique for the x that I start with these real numbers are unique for the x that I start with what I will do then is define the matrix of x matrix of a vector matrix of x relative to the basis that I started with relative to the basis BV define the matrix of x relative to the basis BV by the notation for me will be x BV with these parentheses this matrix if it is a vector it is a column so what is that column it is alpha 1 alpha 2 etc alpha n this is equal to this this is actually a function in order for this to be a function the right hand side must be unique whenever x is unique but we know that it is unique because the representation is given in terms of a basis okay so this is that then the definition of the matrix of a vector relative to a fixed basis okay let us let us observe one thing uh, immediately if I I take the same basis BV instead of U1 U2 etc UN I take U2 U1 etc UN then this matrix will change this will be alpha 2 alpha 1 etc okay so there is really an ordered basis that I am dealing with okay we must deal with ordered basis but hereafter when I write down u1 u2 etc un then it follows that u1 is the first vector in that uh, basis u2 is the second vector etc un this order I should always remember when I write down the matrix of a vector okay so the notion of ordered basis needs to be uh, introduced but I will just skip it over 
ordered basis means a basis whose vectors form a finite sequence. Sequence means that is the first element of the sequence, second element of the sequence etc. So it is just an ordered set of vectors which also forms a basis. Why is it important? When you write down the matrix it is important because you say there is a first coordinate, there is a second coordinate etc. Alpha 1 is the first coordinate of the, now I am writing a vector in an abstract finite dimensional vector space using numbers. I am writing down the, I am giving a representation to a vector in an abstract finite dimensional space using real numbers alpha 1 etc alpha n by this. So there is a coordinate, first coordinate of the vector x, second coordinate of the vector etc. In order to make sense that it is a first coordinate, second coordinate etc you need to have a fixed basis where the elements are taken in only that order okay that is an ordered basis. Let us make one simple uh, calculation, uh, an elementary example just to consolidate. Let us take uh, uh, R3 uh, for instance, for R3 there is a standard uh, basis, let me call that B1, the standard basis uh, E1, E2, E3, given the standard basis in this order, this is always implicit, the order is implicit, what is uh, the matrix of X relative to BV, uh, B1 given any x in R3 what is the matrix of x relative to this, this is the simplest basis you can write down the matrix immediately but let us let us do it from the scratch this x can be written as okay I will start with the following x is the vector which has 3 coordinates so I have x equal to x1, x2, x3 I am intentionally writing this as a row vector then this x can be written as x1 e1 plus x2 e2 plus x3 e3 this representation is unique and so what is the matrix of x relative to the standard basis I am calling that b1 that is a column vector according to the definition x1 x2 x3. Okay, it is uh, as easy as just taking a row and then putting it this order. This is a simplest basis, suppose I have another basis, let us uh, make a calculation corresponding to that. In particular if uh, let us say x is uh, e pi 0 then the matrix of x relative to b1 is e pi 0. 0 okay let us say I have another basis B2 consisting of this time let me call them U1, U2, U3 where U1 let me say is the vector 1, 1, 0, U2 is the vector 1, minus 1, 0, U3 is the third standard basis 0, 0, 1. I have taken another basis just to illustrate that the matrix corresponding to this basis will be different from the original one corresponding to the standard basis. I want to calculate x relative to this B2 okay instead of doing the general uh, vector let me take this particular vector and uh, do the calculations here. I want to sh I want to determine these numbers let me now call them alpha 1 u1 plus alpha 2 u2 plus alpha 3 u3 first I must write this I have just written x and then I need to determine the matrix of this whole thing relative to b2 please verify uh, the calculations it will turn out to be see this is 1 1 1 minus 1 so it will turn out to be the following uh, for this x for this x that I started with e pi 0 you can verify that it is uh, e plus pi by 2 e minus pi by 2 0 this is a column vector 
this is the matrix of the vector e pi 0 corresponding to the second basis which is obviously different from the matrix of the vector corresponding to the first basis the standard basis. So when I change the vectors rather when I change the basis the representation of the vectors will obviously change okay but there is a relationship between them we will we will be able to demonstrate that there is a relationship between them okay.